शंभ शंभ भूत भूत भूतेश्वर 
ಕಮಲೇಶ್ವರಾ ಶಿವ ಶಿವ ಸರ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಂಭೋ
pandemic dances on across the world and it looks like uh, people are getting used to disease and death around them or even within them. That the news cycles are talking about various other aspects. different parts of the world, you see that the pandemic is covering less and less time on the news cycles of the nations. Well, in India there are many things happening. In the United States, of course, the election fever is building up. So, uh, People are sort of getting used to this. But whether you get used to it or you don't get used to it is not the issue. The important thing is still uh, over a thousand people every day are dying in the United States, a similar number in Brazil, a very close similar number in India. Well, and it's also multiplying. India is doing over a million tests per day. And the positive cases, it took uh, 
over three months to get to two million positive cases. But the last one million has happened in sixteen days. So it's growing exponentially. Fortunately, more people are recovering also. But recovery simply means right now that they did not die. I don't think there is a proper evaluation whether they have fully recovered, have they become normal, are all their bodily functions normal once again. I don't think there is a gauge, nobody has the time nor the facility to gauge those things right now. So as it goes on, we need to understand that virus is not a new thing to us. Periodically, it has happened many times over. I mean to say, in the evolutionary, evolutionary history of a human being, it happened many times over. Well, I was talking to a few uh, scientists who are uh, experimenting with various types of viruses, including the corona type, but not the one which is causing pandemic, but more benign corona types which are already in the human system and various other things. So what I gather from what they were saying is, in many ways, the powerhouse of the human cell itself is from outside. Some microscopic organism or a bacteria or a virus implanted itself into the human cell and became what we today know as mitochondria, which is the powerhouse within the cell, it generates all the energy. So, are we separate from the microorganisms? No, because actually, according to modern science, if you look closely enough at this body, you do not know which is human genetics and which is microorganisms, it's all mixed up. And nearly thirty percent of uh, the protein development which has led to various stages of evolution within us and making us who we are right now, Nearly thirty percent of that evolution happened because of viruses. So I'm saying there is a hope, maybe this virus will evolve you <laughs> Who knows? I've been trying but... <laughs> because of, you know, the advantage of the virus is it's microscopic, that is, you cannot see. If you're walking on the street and if I come, oh, Sadhguru's come and immediately you pretend <laughs> All right? Because you cannot see the virus, you cannot pretend he sees you just the way you are <laughs> I also see, but uh, you know. You cannot pretend, you cannot deceive the virus, isn't that good thing? So things are happening, people are getting frustrated, jobs are being lost, over nineteen million jobs lost in India, nearly twenty-five percent of small businesses closing down. The consequences of this will be huge, massive in terms of economy, social structure. Now the World Health Organization says, uh, oh, pandemic should be over in twenty-four months. 
So all these promises of it'll go away in August, it'll go away in September, it'll go away in October, no, in twenty-four months. I've been saying this right from the beginning, eighteen to twenty-four months is a possibility. Now they're confirming it could... it will end probably in twenty-four months or... not that it will end, we would have gotten on top of it in twenty-four months. In twenty-four months, social structures, economic fabric of the society could be in tatters, but you could evolve, that's a possibility. Terrible things to say at a time like this, I know. Because our life is structured like this, The other day I was just coming out of the place and uh, one particular very highly energetic little frog <laughs> an ambitious one, you know, was trying to get into the building. Well, I don't mind the frogs, I don't eat them, you know, but I don't mind them. I don't even mind all the conversation that's going on in the evenings. Uh, but uh, I don't want him to sleep in my bed. <laughs> so I had to close the door on him. But I thought uh, looking at his energy and ambition to get inside, he reminded me of how we have been as human beings. Maybe this is how life evolved. You, ladies, you know, frogs have turned into... <laughs> all it took is a kiss. <laughs> so, uh, without going through the monkey process, even a frog becomes a human being, Within three days, you will be disappointed. You know, this is happening <laughs> So, uh, we're talking about a froggy world. A tiny frog croaks and leaps in ungainly haste upon the porch. As I wonder what ordained purpose he is out to fulfill, what froggy business or profession drives him? Maybe in feverish hurry to his market place or an exchange. Or he may be the leader of a frog democracy. Or a monarch rushing to the parliament or his court. But he's alone, no courtiers or sidekicks. That cannot be even in the froggy world. One with such a significant voice must be of some importance, maybe a spiritual leader. <laughs> or a religious head. Or is he a cursed prince waiting to be kissed by a lovely maiden? Mr. Frog sets me off into seemingly endless pursuit of finding purpose for a froggy frog, croak, croak. <laughs> well, we're all... we've all been busy. Our own self-ordained purposes, some people shamelessly try to fulfill their own purpose in the world, some people get endorsement from God for everything that they wish to do. One way or the other, everybody has been super busy. And we kept the world buzzing. Why buzzing? We've been keeping it roaring. Well, today, like there was a time when people would discuss weather, now you don't discuss anymore, you just consult <laughs> on the phone. You don't discuss with your neighbor, what does it look like? Is it going to rain today? 
is this going to happen, that going to no such discussion. There is one lady out there, boom, she tells you. So whether discussions are gone, stolen by Google, there used to be religious discussions about the geography of heaven and uh, what will be the accommodation you will get for the kind of person that you are, what will I will get and these things. These things have become little, people have become shy of discussing those things, still they have aspirations. But uh, they've become little shy because it… even to themselves it sounds stupid <laughs> So they've become little shy, but don't think aspirations are gone, still a whole lot of people aspiring to be in a higher heaven than you, always. So the only discussion is about economy. Come election, little politics, but even politics is mired in economy. So one thing we have kept throttle on is economic engine, roaring. Almost everything that you see around you is commerce, commerce and commerce. So, uh, <laughs> commerce has consumed human consciousness. Now this is an engine, this is a vehicle where everybody's foot on the gas pedal is full on. But nobody knows who is handling the steering wheel. When you keep the engine roaring, without a hand on the steering wheel, you know, the next bend is the last bend. So we've been going like this. I know it is extremely cruel to talk about this at a time like this, but at a time like this, if we do not use this time for realization, when else? Tell me. When it's roaring, can you think about it? Because if you stop and think about it, this guy will go ahead of you. When you're racing, no time to stop and look at anything. Even if your wheels fall off, you must still be racing because you're on a race. Now, uh, virus has put a halt to various aspirations, human aspirations. We must understand human aspirations, except a few fundamental ones, all others are just psychological drama playing out in the world. Every nonsensical confusion that human beings are going through is being imprinted on the planet, allowed to play out in most destructive ways. So time has come that we look at this, but since the Printing technology came. I know none of you are reading books anymore, you're looking at the Kindle or the computer screen or the phone screen. But since the printing press came and books came out, books have been dominating human consciousness. Books, not brains, I'm saying. The tyranny of the books are of many kinds. There are wonderful books, inspiring books, entertaining books, fantastic reading. But a whole lot of them have been a one big tyranny dominating human consciousness, subjugating human beings in many ways. The first book that I can think of is the textbook. I escaped. But textbook, though it tortures everybody in the beginning, then you learn the trick. All you have to do is, you just have to memorize ten percent of the damn book, then it'll release you to go to the next class. After that, you never have to think of this damn book. 
So textbook, we learn to escape. We moved from class to class. I don't know, here in United States you do this or not. In India, we were always told after we finished our class, that is we finished this year, we have to go to the next year. One important thing that you do is you call somebody from a poor family who can't buy textbooks and all your textbooks you must... In our home, we must neatly bind it properly and find out the child's name and write his name neatly for him, his class and his school and everything, and you must hand it over to him properly, like it's looking like a new book. But he can't afford to buy a new book, that's the whole scene. So it gave me immense pleasure because my books were new. It gave me immense pleasure to give them, not horribly used, all knowledge squeezed out of it, nothing like that, fresh new books. Again, okay, maybe here and there when they forced me to study, I would have doodled something <laughs> on some page. Except for that, it was a brand new book. It gave me such pleasure to give it away, this child who valued it immensely. So we learned to escape uh, the textbooks. Initially, it looked insurmountable. Tch, yes, when you're third, fourth, fifth standard, it looked insurmountable. It looked like it's a... it's a wall that you cannot cross. But then you learned the trick. There are passages. You don't have to necessarily climb over the wall. I'm saying even what is printed in a third standard book, Believe me, even today you have not understood what it is. Hello? We learned how to find a gap in it and get to... go to the next class and the next class and the next class. So we mastered uh, how to dodge the textbook. Today that there is not probably one human being, maybe there are a few, very few if there are, there's not a single human being on this planet who does not belong to some nation. There was a time, I'm just saying a hundred years ago, there were so many human beings who did not belong to any nation. They migrated, they just lived wherever they want. There was no passport, there was no visa, there was no wall. People went where they want and lived. But right now there is not a single human being or at least there are extremely few human beings who may not belong to a nation. If you are... <laughs> it's a very negative thing, you are a non-state actor, means you are a terror suspect. <laughs> you are not a shepherd, you are not a migrant, you are not a gypsy, you are a terrorist. That's what it means that you don't belong to any nation means right now. So we have to belong to some nation. The basis of a nation is a book again, it's called a constitution. Every nation in its infancy starts with great ideals and exuberance, enormous idealistic approach and exuberance of new nation. After some time, it largely becomes a restrictive process. But one good thing about the constitution is we can amend it. We can find fault or find limitations of what it is and go on doing amendment after amendment after amendment. After a few generations of amendments, well, uh, you can't recognize the original, original nature of the book, it becomes like that. Because we keep doing that and then you don't know in the end what that book is supposed to mean. And in a few generations, everybody learns how to exploit that book and use it against each other. So this goes on. So though initially in the infant nature, in the infant stages of a nation, it is of great inspiration and great exuberance of life, after some time, it becomes largely restrictive. But in two, three, four generations, people understand how to escape that. The best thing is you become a lawmaker. You get elected. Now rules 
you can put it around whichever way you want. The next book that I can think of are the books that are called as holy books. The very word holy means you cannot question the content. That's what it means. You cannot question the content. Because normally, in most cultures, the book is the word of God himself, whatever God you believe in. So, not available for amendment, not available for any criticism, not available for any kind of change, unless you join that privileged club of peop men, not people. <laughs> Women have never been a part of it <laughs> Those, that privileged class of men that you call as clergy, unless you become that, then you have a right to distort it in any way you want. Otherwise, anything that you say about it could mean severe punishment or death. See, a society becomes civilized only when there shall be no persecution in terms of death, torture, imprisonment, for criticizing either a leader or religion or a historical figure or a book, a global establishment of this fundamental is what we call a civilization. Because well, the reason why this might have come is there, there are aspects to life which may not fit into the logical sense of whatever basic logic that one is talking about. So, all right, we can give the privilege to these books that you cannot question the context of the book. Whether God said it, somebody said it, let's not question that because it doesn't matter. But the content must be to co open to question. If once the content is not open to question, it leads to a tyrannical society where anything that you say <laughs> can lead to terrible things for individual human beings and it's not happened to one or two, we could have ignored it if it just happened to a small number of people. It has happened to millions and millions of people on this planet have lost their lives in the last thousand to two thousand years just because they said something that somebody says the book doesn't agree. We do not even know whether that man has read the book first of all. We do not know, but he claims because he's enter entered the privileged club. So once you move in this direction, this is why I said the book, not the brains, because you have to give it up. You have to subjugate human intelligence to accumulated information or accumulated ideas of another time. This fundamentally, it's raining only for me. <laughs> Privileges of being a guru, huh? <laughs> only for me. All right. You're all in nice bright sunshine, look at me. Maybe because I'm saying these things about the <laughs> Oh, but I'm glad it's a tree droppings, not the bird, <laughs> so it's okay <laughs> You will see, uh, what falls out of this class of people who take this position that they can interpret, distort and demonize <laughs> uh, the so-called words of God that cannot be touched by anybody else. That reminds me of a… I don't know, most people might not have even heard about this movie, 
somehow, I don't know why I ended up in this movie, because I was not given to going to uh, these sort of movies, but somehow I ended up there, I don't remember how. There was one movie called Mitch Masala. You heard of this? Wish I would have seen every movie in the world, <laughs> Hindi movie. If you are a Gujarati and you're in United States, that means you've seen every <laughs> Mumbai-made movie. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is a small budget movie, I think. It's called Mirch Masala because uh, the scene is in Rajasthan where these women are working in the red chili processing plants that is from agriculture for it to come to market. It's a very, not really a factory, but hundreds of women working to dry the chili in the right sense because in India, <sighs> we know how to do various kinds of magic with chili. Do not underestimate the power of this magic because the power of this magic of Indian spice, not just the chili, so many other things together. Had the European tongues hanging out and that became the mariner's compass. <laughs> they all wanted to go to India. Not for gold, not for diamonds, they had heard about that also, but it's the spice. Because just imagine, a culture we did not know any other taste other than, than a few natural flavors of meat, this and potatoes and salt, suddenly tasted, ah, masala <laughs> This became the mariner's compass, the tongue. It all pointed east, India. One guy made a mistake and landed up here. Still we are calling those people Indians. <laughs> so, this mirch masala is about this processing of uh, the chili from green chili, making it, drying it up and making it into red chili. It's a whole very interesting process, I'll not go into it though. So, in this movie, there is a bandit. It's a son of the time. A bandit who owns a few guns and stuff on his horse, uh, you know, a band of people comes uh, horseback. They come into a village and uh, when they come, everybody has to make sure they are well fed and they're taken care of and certain amount of uh, share of wealth must happen. They have to give, otherwise they will do something terrible because they are armed. So, they know, just like a government, they will tax you for protection, all right? Even the bandits were not taking forty-two percent. <laughs> of course, many facilities have been created, bandits created no other facility except they didn't shoot you, which is a big facilitation. You lived. So, controlling this aspect of whether you live or die, they managed their own economy. So, the bandits came to this village, so the village had to feed them, take care of them, everything. Then this bandit chief was sitting there and watching all the village ladies going to the river and getting water. He saw one particular young woman and he said, I want that girl. I said, no, 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 she is married. Ah, uh, doesn't matter, get her. Then uh, they went to the woman, her husband has gone out on some business outside. She said, no way am I going to that bandit. Then initially, social leaders in the village came and said, do this, otherwise he's threatening that he will kill all of us. You go, spend some time with him. She said, no way. If my husband was here, this nonsense wouldn't happen. Now he's not here, you're trying to exploit me, I'm not going. 
Then the political leaders, democratically elected leaders come and say, please do it for the people, let's do it for the people. She says, no. And the worst cut naturally comes from the clergy. The priest of the temple comes when everybody else fails to convince her. He comes and says, hey, sab maya hai beti. <laughs> Saying, this whole life is maya, this all illusion, doesn't matter, it's all illusion, you know. You going to him, coming back, everything is illusion. Well, if that is illusion, you getting shot also is illusion. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't go that far. It works only for you, not for me. So, because somebody gets endorsed not by public mandate, that also makes them do all kinds of funny things. But now they got endorsed by another power that nobody can see, suddenly it gives them rights to do all kinds of things. So we are not against books, books have done many wonderful things to us. Before these videos and online and everything came, it is books which took us around the world. We read a book about Antarctica and we were almost there if it was well written, you know. Hello? It is so. We went through so many experiences as if we lived through it just by reading a book. So books have done wonderful things to us. But institutionalized books like textbooks, constitution and holy books, ooh, they've always been a huge restriction upon human consciousness. Particularly those books that cannot be amended are always a serious problem. What comes out of them, you never know. Because they can make anything out of it. Because largely it is said in such ambiguity, it could… anything could come out of it depending upon the clergy, that elite club of people. No, no, not people, of men. <laughs> that elite club of men, still it's a male domain, you must know. You can go today into the bar, which you were not allowed some time ago, you can go into a golf club, which you were not some time allowed some time ago. You can go into the parliament or the senate, which you were not allowed some time ago, but still this is an elite man's club, the clergy. So what comes out of this book just depends on their whim or their intent. Well, I've been telling you about this uh, I've spoken to you some time ago, probably. You know, as a large family in Tennessee, usually large families in this region have… Uh, depending upon… this is not only in this country, everywhere it is so, if it's a rich family, usually their holy books are… Uh, in India, they won't leather bind it because they're against it or it'll be gold trimmed or something, something, but the book gets bigger and bigger, you know. I walk into somebody's house in India, this big Bhagavad Gita, this big. Nobody can hold it in their hands and read it. It's on a stand, of course nobody reads it. <laughs> Similarly, uh, you know, other holy books in different cultures are put up on a stand because they're that big, no human being can hold it in their hands. So the book grew big in the family. There was a young boy, so they put him to school, in a boarding school in the East Coast. After uh, a year of being in the boarding school, he came back just around seven, eight years of age. He just learned to read and little, it's exciting him the written word. So when he came back for the vacation, he was flipping through this big book which nobody had turned over for a long time. And you know, some people have this habit of taking a leaf or a flower and keeping inside 
the book, it gets dried up, desiccated and stays there. Uh, it comes out like a nice artwork. Leaf is a fantastic artwork anyway, but it has to be in a book for you to notice it. Here, it's in the wrong place. It's on a tree, it's the wrong place, it must be in the book, because that's where you pay attention. You even see sunrise and sunset on your phone, I know that. So he was flipping through this book and there was a leaf, a dry leaf, which might have been there for a very long time and it fell out. He looked at this and screamed, Mama, Mama, come here and see what I've found. Mother asked, what have you found, my son? Just come and see. His mother, a little alarmed, came running to see what. She said, what? He pointed at the leaf and said, Adam's underwear. <laughs> see, what comes out of, out of, out of a book? is left to you, all right? So, one important thing to do is, any book, either amendments should be allowed or at least criticism should be allowed, one of those things. Maybe it is written by a great sage or a messenger or a son or himself, so we don't want to amend it. You… you lose the rights to amend it, it's okay. But at least must be open to discussion, debate, not simply criticizing for something. See, a question, everybody must get this in the world. Unfortunately, all the wrong sort of people are asking questions. When I say wrong sort of people, people are asking questions to prove a point. People are asking questions to prove they're smarter than you. That is not the purpose of a question. Question, you must refine your question in such a way, by the time we are done with this question, your understanding, your experience, your realization about this life should be a little deeper. Question is a tool to dig deeper, but most people are using question to beat somebody. This must be taken away because question is a fantastic tool to dig deeper, either asking the question to myself or to you or to somebody else. It must be always a tool, it must be kept as a pristine tool to dig deeper and take human understanding and realization to a deeper possibility. Unfortunately, questions are being used to thrash somebody. Because they started from the school, the teacher asked the question not to deepen your understanding, to expose your ignorance. So. It must at least be open to debate, discussion and questions. Not simply wild criticism, not deriding something, not… not even questioning the fundamental context in which that particular book might have been rendered, but content must be open to discussion. Not only by the privileged segment, by everybody. Fortunately, largely in the Indian culture, this has been open, anybody can ask question, anybody can debate. Even when himself came, there also he could not escape questions, hundreds of questions to all of them. But this has been suppressed in many places because I'm speaking about this, because at a time like this, when the pandemic is on, so many people are busy with their own agendas of enhancing their own powers in the world, political ones, religious ones, all kinds of people. This is a time for all of us when mortality stares in our face, at least then we must become sincere about what we're doing, it's very important. At least then, if you could not do it all your life because you were racing with somebody, at least then, because death is one place where you don't want to race with anybody. Hello? You don't want to get there ahead of someone. Hello? You would like to be the last person to go <laughs> So, when it comes to mortality, we must understand race is a bad thing. We should not race. I'm talking about racing. 
not racism, because these days, these days it's dangerous to just use a word <laughs> So, at a time like this, I really hope now that WHO <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is uh, saying twenty-four months, twenty-four months of sadhana, of keeping quiet, keeping your mouth shut, masked so that you don't look beautiful anymore, <laughs> you don't look prettier than somebody else, you just look like a mask. Okay, you can have a better design mask than somebody else <laughs> But even if you have a really, you know, in India, all kinds of fancy designer masks have come with gold brocades and everything. But the best thing about it is nobody knows who is behind it <laughs> So it doesn't matter. You make something beautiful, that's wonderful. It will make… make it pleasant for other people's eyes, but it doesn't enhance you, it's a good thing, you know <laughs> So, uh, this is a very good time to really look at this, to make the world in such a way that human intelligence and consciousness will shape the nature of our societies and civilization. This is the time to do it. This is a very good time to do it. So, to what extent we can, we do not know, but definitely we can seed it a little more strongly because the season is right. Now, this may look… if you people are thinking in a certain way, they may think when we have lost our job, when we have closed our business, when we are struggling for our bread, this man is talking all this. We must understand this, when we were eating well also, most people were not happy. There are more people in this world who have food to eat and miserable than those who don't have food to eat and miserable. There are more people in this world who are healthy and miserable than those who are unhealthy and miserable. At least those who don't have food to eat and who don't have health, they have a good reason to be unhappy. Rest don't have any reason, just that they've become experts <laughs> How to cause misery to myself? Such massive expertise has been developed that, uh, you know, happens like this. So, you have to evolve a strategy. When I say a strategy, this happened. A little boy was sitting on the street side. He saw another boy with a dog on a string and taking the dog. Must have caught a street puppy and taking it home. This little boy looked at him and said, Can I play with your dog? Okay, not my dog, I just caught him. So let's play. They played. Then the boy became very morose very melancholic. He said, even I want to take a dog home, but my parents will never allow it. Any number of time I ask them, they say no. The other boy said, that's not the way to do it, it needs a strategy. <laughs> what is the strategy? So the other boy said, just start throwing up a ruckus at home that you want a baby brother. <laughs> Believe me, they'll get you a dog. So right now, <laughs> we uh, don't need a strategy like this because the virus is strategy. When you realize that you are mortal, then you will also start a… you know, because mortal simply means there's a limited amount of time. What does unlimited amount of wealth mean to a man who has limited amount of time? This much, I think, understanding will come. I, b I trust the human intelligence still. So, though it has been subjugated largely to these three books, textbook, constitution and holy books, in spite of that, there are sparks of intelligence working. When you put a gun to somebody's head, I think 
the textbook knowledge, constitutional rights and invitation to heaven, everything is forgotten, you just want to live. So I believe that when mortality is hung in front of your face, intelligence works beyond the tyranny of various kinds of conditionings that happen in the society. So this is a time when human intelligence is beginning to think and work. What is all this about? So we don't have to make any strategy. Naturally, the virus has played a strategy. Maybe it's nature which has played a strategy. Maybe believers would like to say it's God's strategy. It doesn't matter, it's a situation. Every situation that arises, when sun rises, we can make use of it one way. When it sets, we can make use of it another way. Moon rises, another way. Full moon one way, no moon another way. Whatever the situation, there is something to it. That is if you have a working intelligence. If your intelligence is concretized in the form of a textbook or a constitutional rights, I, I'm not talking about the duties because nobody talks about the constitutional duties, everybody is talking about constitutional rights and the holy diktats from elsewhere. When you're free from that, you will be free from that the moment you confront your mortal nature. Limited amount of time. Limited amount of time means we need to manage this life in such a way, for what? There are only two things. How profound is my experience of life? How impactful am I? in what I do. This is all there is with life. There's simply nothing else, I'm telling you. You can't eat more. Well, you can, but <laughs> it'll have consequences. You can't wear more clothes at a time. So if you want to wear more clothes, you must be constantly changing ten times a day, which is big nuisance. Well, there are some people who are wearing two kilograms of gold around their neck, all the best. <laughs> I will give them five kilograms of rock on their head if they wish. All we have to do is call the rock as diamond, matte diamond. It doesn't shine, that's all, look at this. I can give this to you. Hello? This comes from all the way from India or it's here? Local granite, I think. So, we can cut one one square, a square block and give it to you, you can carry it on your head. If anybody asks what you said, this is the biggest diamond in the world. Oh, come on, it doesn't shine. No, this is a mad diamond. <laughs> Everybody will want a mad diamond. So, it is time to understand, life is happening to us in passing. If you look here, there, there, It'll be gone. It'll be gone, I'm telling you. Not necessarily succumbing to the virus, even without the virus you will die, I'm just informing you. Hello? This is a secret that most people do not know. They think only this damn virus will kill them. No, even without the virus, you shall die, all right? We'll bless you with a long life, but you will. But they are saying, the scientists are saying that with the virus you may evolve. That looks like good hope, good possibility, because it's free, you know, it's free. So since this doctor I was talking to told me this, I've been wondering, should I go and get infected? <laughs> because I don't want to miss the evolution <laughs> Suppose I'm going to go grow a horn or a... No, tail is not derogatory, tail is not good. I don't know, maybe an extra hand? Two arms came out of these shoulders. Suppose one comes out of my head, that must be an intelligent hand. <laughs> Hello? You know Maradona's hand? Hello? Hand of God did some miraculous things, all right? But it's free. This happened. One of the chain food stores in America announced fat-free fries. 
for other parts of the world who don't understand, thirty percent of America's diet is fries. Not now, things are changing, it's becoming salads and stuff with certain number of people, but largely fries. You can live without anything, but we cannot live without fries. French are blamed for it. But later on somebody renamed it as freedom fries. It's our right to eat <laughs> fried food and do whatever we want with ourselves. It is a freedom. So fat-free fries was advertised. A young man who was very conscious about his health went to eat the fat-free fat -free fries because we love the fries, the problem was the fat. Then they fried the thing in a regular way and they put the fries, it was dripping with oil. So he looked at this and said, what is this? You said it's fat-free fry, it's dripping with oil like this. So the man said, see we are only charging you for the fry, the fat is free. Please, I think there are some questions <laughs> This question is from Jose. I have done inner engineering online and I live in South America. I have been eagerly wanting to get initiated into Shambhavi and I thought initiation would be denied to me as I can't afford to travel, as I thought the initiation can only be done in person. Last week, you mentioned you could even initiate us online. This filled me with joy as so many people who have been longing for it have this chance now, irrespective of where they are. But may I ask, what changed? Most importantly, how can I make sure I receive this as powerfully as I would in person? I don't want to miss out. Uh, <laughs> well, nothing changed, I'll say. Uh... And anyway, we are not initiating online. There is no such thing as offline initiation and online initiation. Initiation process, particularly for Shambhavi, is more like a consecration of a human form. Or if we want to put it in more mechanical terms, you've heard of uh, these days many motors have or no more induction, but most electric motors are induction motors. That means there is a process of induction. Though there is electricity, though there is a mechanism, still it doesn't go unless induction happens. So this is like an induction. Does this happen offline or online? There's no such thing. As I've said repeatedly many times probably, I have initiated more people who I have never seen in my life than people whom I have seen. This doesn't mean I initiated them online, this happened well before online came, this has been happening forever. The important thing is just this, the entire program, the physical programs we've been conducting or now the online programs we're conducting, essentially is about knocking on your door. How much knocking do you need on your head is different from person to person. There was a time when uh, our initiations had long preparation. We were going through a thirteen-day program preparing people to be initiated because that was a different sort of initiation which now is happening as a secondary program in the form of shunya. At that time the basic program was shunya, so we need thirteen to fourteen days. Without that we could not do it because we needed that level of openness. And also <laughs> the bounty of nature comes to you even if you're not willing. But 
subtler dimensions of life come to you only in your willingness. Even if it's there, you will not experience it. See, right now there is rain for me, you <laughs> you, you don't have it. <laughs> so, all programs, let's look at it this way, all programs are just a knock on the door. When we… see, if we want to make you open the front door, talk, 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 but some of you peep out of the hole and say, who is that? Say, no, I'm Sadhguru. <laughs> what do you want? No, I don't even want to enter your house, but just open the door. If you just open the door, I'll go away. No. Who is this guy saying, open the door? What do you want? No, I don't want anything. Then you're really dangerous. You don't want anything? <laughs> when I was in Lebanon, maybe most… Uh, maybe Lebanese people know, but others will not know, is uh, there is a queen in Lebanon. Well, no more uh, political authority or any kind of authority, but a small palace and a queen and there's a social status attached to the queen. So I got invited for a lunch there with a lot of prominent people in Lebanon in the lunch and I went there to speak and to eat. When I went there, I met one interesting guy who's… who's a really man about in the society, Mr. Bunbury. You know what's Bunbury? No, 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 it's okay. Uh, then uh, we got into conversation. After I spoke and then ate and then, you know, individual conversations happening here and there. So this guy was an interesting guy, we were talking and then he said, See Sadhguru, the problem with you is you don't want money. If you say, we, I want… I've come here to make money, we will trust you. <laughs> the moment you say, I don't want money, then we are suspicious of you. We are very straightforward. If you say, I've come here to make money, we understand because you and me, same. You suddenly say, you don't want money, then what do you want? Well, maybe I don't need anything, that's even worse. We have always been suspicious of people who don't want anything because they will bring another dimension and trouble us. <laughs> I thought that was very interesting because that's true. You know, you remember inner engineering introduction, free introduction. You never understood that it'll cost you life <laughs> It cost my life too <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's free, means there are many things to it. You need to understand this, this is the nature of dimensions beyond physicality. In physicality, everything is transactional. You give this, I give that. You take this, I take that. It's a world of give and take, which has its usefulness, which has its own pleasures and beauty to it. But transactional world is one thing, transformational world is of a different nature. So what is initiation is a transmission. For transmission, actually you don't need any understanding. Because today <laughs> you've gone through this schooling and you read the textbook, because of that, you have this idea, unless I understand something, I cannot do it. That means you will never do anything significant in your life, never ever. Because what you understand, the very word understand means, it's always less than you, isn't it? You cannot understand something which is beyond you, but you can experience what is beyond you. Right now you can experience the sunlight, it is beyond you, isn't it? Can you turn it on, turn it off? It is beyond you, but you can experience it. This life is beyond you, 
but you can experience it. So if you are in this mindset, if I do not understand, I will not do it, well, <laughs> you will do just rudimentary stuff in your life. So, initiation is a transmission. Without transmission, there is no transformation. And transmission is not a transaction. A teaching is a transaction. In some way, it is a transaction. So, the programs that you have gone through are kind of transactions, sit there, talk to you, you ask question, I answer you, and you ask one more question, I answer you, for that you ask another question, oh, how many have you asked? <laughs> I am showing such enthusiasm to pick up every question and hit the ball every time with full enthusiasm, not because I think it is a great question, it's a dumb question. But I know that is the way you open your door, that is your code, I must do tuk 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 <laughs> Then you open the door. Who is it? A familiar voice. You'll open the door. Unfamiliar voice, maybe it's God, but you will not open the door. Because you are that kind, we have programs and programs and more stupid programs. This virus, phew, Gone. All programs gone. So now uh, we're just waiting that this constant threat of mortality and uh, you know as Alama said, once you have money in your head, we can't talk to you. I hope money stays in your pocket, it's necessary, but maybe it will drain out of your head because you have money in the bank but you can't travel anywhere. You can't spend on anything. If Amazon was not there, you would have realized much sooner. <laughs> much sooner. But you're shopping and still you're thinking your money is doing the thing. If that one thing was not there by now, so many would have realized, you know? So realization is slowly happening, willingness is slowly happening. As this willingness happens, knocking on the door becomes less and less relevant. The transaction of teaching and trying to make you willing will become less and less relevant. This I found, you know, in a very stark and painful way, I realized this. When I first went into... Uh, uh, to conduct a prison program, now it's mandatory in southern India in all the prisons happening, even during this pandemic, our teachers are doing the online programs in the prisons in southern India. We did some here also in United States. When I went there, I just realized, uh, I announced a ten-day program, thinking I will do a basic, simple program, uh, thinking because most of the people in the prison Many of them have... Uh, you know, almost everybody is a school dropout, ninety percent of them. Many of them have never been to school, language, all these issues, how much they can understand. But when I went there, I... what I was supposed to teach in ten days, I was done in two days. Then what to do? I did Bhava Spandana in another two days. I did Samyama right there. Everything, all these programs which happen in different stages for the free people, who are imprisoned by themselves. For the imprisoned, I could do everything within a few days, six, seven days, everything over. After that, we were just together enjoying each other's company and absolutely joyful, fantastic atmosphere out there in ten days' time. All programs got over in a brief time because no knocking was needed. The only problem in the prison is the door is not open. Tch, somebody else has closed it. Home, you have closed it, so you don't realize. In your heart, you have closed it, so you don't realize. In your mind, you have closed it, so you don't realize. When somebody else has closed the door upon you, the only thing that you want is door open. Yes or no? Only thing that you want in your life is door open. This is what I realized with the prisoners, convicts. They, if you look at their things that they have done, terrible things they have done, 
but they became such fantastic spiritual material for transmission. Boom, it just went like that. Even now, they're writing to us, writing poetry, programs have been going on for over twenty years now in the prisons. Many of them who are there for life or in India, unfortunately, there are many people who are sitting on the death row and waiting for over ten, fifteen years. Their lives are fully transformed because opening the door was the only thing that they wanted. Now you are very cautious about opening the door. As mortality knocks from… not from outside but from inside, now opening the door becomes natural. So this is one part of it. Another part of it is the preparatory part. Preparation is… one thing is on the level of the body, which our teachers, our Ishangas will do it with small groups of people online, taking much more time, what was being done in about three, four hours time will be done in much more elaborate way to ensure that practices, preparatory practices get across. And uh, knocking, we will knock you more than we were knocking when we were in physical presence. See, even when I sat with you, Hello, is the camera getting my hand on? <laughs> Secret messages were going. I don't know, catch you, no, don't use the phone, don't look here, don't look there, be here, be here, be here. No, Sadhguru, I'm just writing down your words only, I'm just putting it on my phone. No, 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 it's not about that, just be here. Doesn't matter you don't understand a damn thing, just be with me. We told you this and you thought, what is this nonsense? He wants me to look at his face all the time. What does he think of himself? All these things we have gone through, all kinds of obscenities a guru has to go through. Because anything that you do, the way it works, they have their own idea, but it's okay. It's okay because it's worked. It's okay because it's worked, otherwise it's not okay. So now, knocking on the door, we are making it in a different way, more elaborate way to ensure. See, even when you were in a group, we had to do so many things. Volunteers have to prevent you from uh, an endemic urinary problem. <laughs> Hello? You want to pee every five minutes. Yes, <laughs> you do know this. To keep your attention, so many things had to be done. Now we are doing this preparatory step, now we are reducing the transmission time. Even there, transmission time was limited. We are doing all the drama to get your doors open. Now, if you don't open your door, most probably you will anyway not come for the initiation, all right? That's a good thing. We don't have the problem of chucking you out. We don't have the problem you came for a for a five, six hour program, somebody comes two hours late and they think it's their right, constitutional right to enter the place. We are facing this big argument, sometimes we call the law enforcement to deal with them. All those problems gone. If you're not interested, you're not there, that's all. It's fine with me. If you're not there, it's your problem. So if you're there, we are compressing this time in such a way, your focused, intensely focused time is just three to four hours in the entire program. The other things also you must learn, because the other things are like going from class to class in the school, because if you don't know those things, they won't take you to the next class. So the teachers will make sure that you know the preparatory steps well. The initiation part will anyway be only twenty, thirty minutes, but the session may be three hours or four hours. We are seeing technology-wise, we are still exploring various methods with which every hundred participants could be monitored by a dedicated volunteer, seeing that all of them are focused. There are some issues to talk to them, stay focused, stay focused, don't go to the bathroom now. You must see the incredible thing. After going through seven days of program, We've been telling them continuously, see, all this circus is only to initiate you. Just when initiation is happening, 
simply uh, somebody gets up. <laughs> what? Well, somebody volunteers to what? I want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, just now you went and came. No, I like to go once again. <laughs> this is called karma. Because inside your compulsions rule you. We don't have to go through these obscenities. If you go to the bathroom, you go. All right? You just won't get it, that's up to you. If that's your choice, it's fine with me. So, openness to create the necessary door opening, we are doing many things. If you sit there, now that you are in Peru, huh? what is this? Peru? Now you're in Peru and you're thirsty, you're not a problem. I'm sure you will come and sit there ten minutes ahead of me, Tch, waiting. If you're like that, you are not a problem. I am not initiating you online, I'm just initiating you individually as a person, which is how it is always done. There is no offline, online. Initiation is a direct transmission, it will happen that way and it will be as effective as ever. Only thing is, your family, your pets, your children, husband, wife must be kept out. You are absolutely there with the process. Well, we will ensure it works wonderfully well without your neighbor screaming, your neighbor falling on you, something else happening in the crowded class, all those problems gone just by yourself as it should have been. Actually, it's ideal condition. If you are absolutely open, in fact, it is a much better condition than an assembly of five, ten thousand people. Five, ten thousand people, there are many issues which are hard to manage. Now, uh, I think these are better times in that way. You're sitting by yourself, you're thirsty. If you're not, you're in the bathroom, it's okay. <laughs> It'll work wonderfully well. I think we'll leave it there, we've gone over time-wise. So, uh, uh, one, one thing is we are preparing for Sadhguru exclusive starting from 23rd of September. So we are thinking of various things and one important thing is uh, we have never done this in Northern America, in North America rather. So we will be doing something with North America in the next couple few weeks. Interesting, this is not something that everybody can participate because uh, we want to... Mm, we want to bring out something, material, content, connected to North America in terms of its traditions, its spirituality, its occult, its history. Based on this, we will be doing something. So, uh, we are just exploring how you could participate in this online. Offline participation will not be possible. Online participation, how you could do we are exploring these possibilities, hopefully we will be able to facilitate this because we will be moving and in this movement, how much technology we will be able to carry, we are not sure, but I believe something can be done. We look forward to having you there. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya Tabhuteshwaraya Kala, kala, kaleshwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambho Shambho Mahadev